Eiffel. London, 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 London. Eiffel. London. This is James Helder for Eiffel London. We are in Sheffield today to catch up with David Caldwell from Caldwell Promotions for basically his end of year summary and just, just a little bit about what's going to happen in 2013 with regards to Caldwell Promotions. What's happening, David? All right? I'm good, thanks. A bit cold, a bit wet, yeah. but other than that, I'm really good, thanks. Really good. good. good, good. Um, could you tell us a little bit how your 2012 went um, in regards to your first couple of shows? Do you know what? 2012 has been an absolutely massive year for us at Coldwell Boxing. Um, it's gone better than what we thought. You know, We had big plans for this year, um, but it's far, far superseded anything, any expectation, anything. We've had great fights, great shows. You know, packed out venues, um, and and the fan base has just grown really, and, and and boxing fans in general have just really got behind what we're trying to do and, and what we are doing. And you know, like I said, 2012 I could never even dreamt would be where we're at now. Could you talk to us a little bit about some of your fighters and how their years been? Um, notably, first of all, I'd like to talk about Curtis Woodhouse. Could you tell us a little bit um, what's going on with Curtis? Well, I'm I'm really proud of Curtis because obviously, you know, he, he's he's come from the background that he has, limited experience, blah blah blah. blah everybody knows about that. But um, you know, he's he's this year he's he's proven his critics wrong. You know, he's proven you know that he he, he has got metal. He's proven it can come back from a, a you know a bad defeat in the Dale Miles fight, which was an, an awesome fight. It was an absolute fantastic tear up. Um, and then he's come back and he's won a title. He's, he's won a he's won an English title. He's now champion of England, and and you know it's it's big things for him from here on in. Um, you know, I'm I'm immensely proud of Curtis. He's one of my favourite fighters that I've worked with, um, and this year's been been more satisfactory for us with him. The Del Miles Curtis Woodhouse fight was an absolute yeah. blast storm. <laughs> the fourth round in that fight as well. Yeah. A lot of people are still talking yeah. about it. Funny enough, I've just been talking. I've just been on the phone with Curtis um, because I'd, I'd, I'd watched um, the fight last night, yesterday afternoon. Sorry, because we put out uh, a Twitter um, vote off for for our Coa Boxing's fight of the year, and um, we narrowed it down to the three, which was Woodhouse against Miles, Mansoor against Nathan Graham, and then of course um, Kieran Farrell and Anthony Collar, um, and. And I, I re-watched the Woodhouse Miles fight and I'd forgotten just how brutal it is. It's one of those that, all right, you get fights where people are throwing, you know, helpful leather and throwing a lot of punches, but you could hear every single shot that was landed, you know, so you could hear it. You can you see, you can see it on, on, the, on the replay, on the, on the video, you can actually hear the punches landed. Every shot was a bomb. And like you said, round four, round four is one of my favourite rounds. I was sat in the office yesterday and, you know, the guys in the other office were like, all they could hear was me going, oh! It was just, it was, every shot was a bomb. And there's one stage where uh, Miles backs Curtis up onto, onto ropes. And it looks like Curtis is in trouble and he just starts reeling off these left ducks, catching Miles coming in. And it, just a brilliant, brilliant fight. So that's, that's you know, that, that was absolutely amazing because of, because of brutality, because of the power. Uh, I'd like to pick up a couple more of your fighters just to talk about again Chad Gaynor. Uh, yeah. Great year for Chad. Could you tell yeah. us a little bit about that? I'm about excited that? about um, Chad Gaynor. I think he's a really good kid. We've got him in prize fighter um, in January, so so that's going to be a really good exposure for him. What it did for for another one of uh, one of our good prospects, Nav Mansoure, um, is it it brought what we believe and what, what we rate. It brought to the public attention. You know, people outside Rotherham didn't really know who Nav Mansoure was and didn't know if it was any good. They saw him in Pies Fighter, you know, and, and his profile's gone up. This is what Pies Fighter can do. I know he's got his detractors and people that knock it, um, but you know, I'm not afraid to put unbeaten kids into Pies Fighter. If they don't win it and they get a loss over three rounds, who cares? You know, um, it's certainly not done Nav any harm at all. Um, we're doing a rematch with Crothers um, February 22nd with all eight rounds, which is going to be an absolute barnstorm. You saw what it was like over three rounds, you know. You're going to see what it's like over eight rounds. It'll be, it'll be fantastic. Um, and the same thing with Chad. Chad's unbeaten, eight and zero. This year is going to going to be a step up for him. Um, you know, we're, we're targeting at kids around that sort of level for for February 22nd when he fights again. But he's got to get through Prize Fighter, and and the field in Prize Fighter is going to be exciting because I think. This time round, we, we've got a lot of hungry kids in there. We've got kids like Glenn Foot in there, Nasr Al Arbe. We've got other kids in there that are prospects that want to get to the top. Um, I haven't heard of any guys in there yet that, um, uh, without being disrespectful, that are over the hill um, looking at it as a you know last chance saloon. These are fresh, hungry guys that seem to be in there. So it's going to be exciting. And again, you know, it, for any of the kids that are out there, if they don't win it, so what? As long as they put on a good show and the fans are excited and the viewers 
are excited and take note of these names, then they're going to watch the progress as they go on, and, and that's how I see with Chad. You've got a great mix of fighters, established fighters, as well as up and yeah. coming prospects. Again, people like Jose Burton or the Fringe of Fringe and breaking through. Do you think this stands called Raw Boxing in a good place for 2013? Yeah, I do. Like I said, I mean, 2012 was fantastic. We've signed some really good fighters. I mean, you know, Derry Matthews and now Matthew Atten and, and, and you know, people like that that, we'll, that we've got that are established and Curtis has come through and then your, your next wave, which is Jose Burton's and uh, Mighty Clark's and and then now we've got a, a, a young, fresh breed that's coming through, um, people like Liam Hanrahan at Super Bantamweight that I'm really excited about. Um, Liam Conroy, who, who didn't get a decision on, on the last show, um, but I think he's a great prospect. I think, you know, this is what I, what I like to do, is I like to put them in real fights that they're going to learn. Um, and, and Liam will have learned so much, for, so much from that fight. He didn't get a decision, but I thought he won it, and so did everybody else watching it. It was a close, close fight, but that's what you want as a fan. As a prospect, you need fights where you have questions asked about yourself. You know, he, he got rattled in the in the fifth round, um, and he came through it and came through and bossed the, bossed the sixth round. Um, things like that. When he gets into a title fight, then you're in against a champion. You're gonna lose rounds. You might get hurt if it's a banger. You might get hurt. And, and and if you don't know how you react and you've never experienced that, when you come back to corner, you might press a little panic button and you might doubt yourself. Well, Liam can come back to the corner now for the rest of his career knowing that he's been hurt in a fight, he's been stung and, and, and he's lost rounds and he's come back and he knows how to handle that situation. And, and for me, that's more important as a promoter rather than having my kids just winning every round. I, you, you see things where, where you know, commentators might, might know, oh, this kid's never lost a round in his career and he's this, 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 and he's a great prospect and blah, blah, blah. Well, he's, he's, he's not had the full package yet. He's not fully experienced yet. You know, if you lose a round, it doesn't matter. And and I think for me, um, putting them in in proper fights, then my job is if they get beat like Liam did, um, you bring them back because that's that's my job as a promoter. You can't put them in in good fights and testing fights that the fans are going to be excited about. And me as a promoter, you know, I want my you know I want the fans that turn up and I want the fans that tune in to be excited about our prospects and about our fights. But you can't put those fights on if, if the minute they get beat, you ditch them and say, oh, that's it, he's got, he's, got, he's got a loss on his record, that's it. You have to build them back. That kind of brings me to my next question again. A lot of people may be not fighting, but build their house fighters up. Yeah. You seem to be putting your house fighters in some very tough fights, notably uh, the Battle of Manchester yeah. recently. I'm going to come to uh, Ant Colo and Kieran yeah. Farrell. Again, some might say that was maybe 60% in Connor's favour going into that fight. Yeah. Next week. Champions, yeah. The way that I see it is Kieran is 14 and 0. He is a kid I don't think he's ever lost a round. Right? Case in point. He's 14 and 0. Uh, Anthony Crawler, um, alright, one of them was, was in prize fighter, but he's lost two out of his last three against guys that aren't at the top of that division in Britain. If you can't put a kid in that's 14 and 0 and you know 100 percent confident in his abilities, um, he expects to become a champion. If you can't put a kid in at, at, at that that's got of that stature in against a guy that is just just below top top level of domestic then you've got a problem there how many fights do you want do you want him to have another six fights do you want him to have another three fights when do you want to judge it you know it, it was different if if crawler had been unbeaten coming off a great performance as looking a million dollars then you know then you think oh well you know what not yet but you know kieran wanted a, a test he wanted a real fight you know he's he's it was, you know, it's a real fight, it's a real test, and, and it's a, this is what boxing's about. Um, and he, he proved in that fight that he isn't, a, he isn't a level below. I think Crawler's class in ability was the deciding factor. I think that's what, what, um, what led to him to win the fight. But that could have been another six fights down the line. Kieran Farrell is Kieran Farrell. He's going to fight like that, full stop, you know, and, and Crawler's touch of class would probably, you know, outdo him in six fights' time. However, now Kieran's been in at that level, um, he'll learn from it and he'll improve from it. You can't, you can't improve unless you, you have obstacles that you have to overcome and you have to adjust to. Absolutely cracking fight with Colour Kieran Farrell. Could you give us just a quick update on Kieran Farrell? How yeah. he's going and, and when we could maybe expect to participate soon in that game? He's fine, um, thank God. Um, obviously it was, it was really scary. I mean, in, in, my, in my time in boxing, that is the worst the worst experience I've ever had in boxing. Um, at the end of the fight, I just thought he was going over to the corner to um, to pump up with his crowd, and then and he just, you know, he just he just seemed to freeze, and then obviously we know he, he collapsed, and what have you. Um, 
thankfully he's, he's fine, he's alright, uh, he was released from hospital after a couple of days um, and he's just enjoying time with his family now. Whether he boxes again or not, I don't know and to be honest I'm, I'm not really, um, that's not my main concern, my main concern is that he's, he's, he's healthy and he's, he's fit and he's got no, no side effects to, to what happened. Um, if he wants to box again he'll have to go through all medicals and procedures. I believe one or two boxers have, have had the same thing and um, been checked out and fine. Now for me it's a case of I wouldn't want him to box again unless um, he has a battery of, of, of medical tests saying that there's not, nothing any more likely to happen as if there is me or you taking up boxing or fighting again you know, tomorrow. Um, if there's a slight, slight chance or if it leaves him slight, you know, um, even slightly more susceptible to having anything going wrong then I'd, even if they said yes but you can box I would say no I don't want you to box um, it's, got, it's got to be absolutely 100% nailed on there's no effects whatsoever and then, and then we'll take it from there we'll see Would it be a benefit of hindsight uh, looking at it again would you still do the same thing and put, put the film found in that fight? Well you can say that about anything it's like would I have put would I have done Curtis Woodhouse against Dale Miles Curtis got knocked out you can say that about anybody you know um, this, this is boxing. Uh, obviously, um, you do think, oh, Jesus, I made that fight, what did I do? Um, but you don't make a fight, you know, Collar's, Collar's not a big banger. You know, the fight went the distance, he's not a big puncher. You, you, you get fights that are made where you have a, a young prospect going in against a murderous puncher and he, and he goes in there. And, he, and, you know, this is boxing. But like I said, he's 14 and 0, he's, he's, he's got experience with sparring guys like McCluskey in training camps constantly, and, and you know, he's, he's is, is at that level um, and it was just I don't think it was a case of, of the match I think it was a case that Kieran just went out there and threw absolutely everything and and without being disrespectful of him he wasn't bothered about what was coming back I think you have to have some sort of defence uh, and some sort of um, some sort of plan to, to to watch out for what's coming back your way just going in there and just taking shots all day long, it doesn't matter if you're an experienced fighter. There's fighters that have, that have, that have collapsed and, and had injuries, that are the champions that have, that have had many a great fights and what have you, and, and seasoned, seasoned veterans that have gone in there and end up getting damaged. I don't think that's, you know, that, that's anything to do with, oh, it was thrown in too deep. It wasn't thrown in too deep. You know, before the fight, everyone was saying it was what a great match it was. If it was a great matchup going into a fight, then you can't say then, oh, it's thrown in too deep. You know, it's a fight where, you know, it's timing. Is it right, isn't it? That was what all intrigue was. As it turned out, Crawler was, was just simply a bit better than, than Farrell. But that's boxing. Groundbreaking stuff from Paul Girl Promotions. I, I can honestly say I don't think any other promotion in the UK has launched an app where, say, since they haven't had the TV deals in yeah. place at this moment, and actually launched for that for the people to yeah. buy and then watch boxing live. So again, this is this is groundbreaking in Paul Girl Boxing and Dallas. Yeah, I mean, myself and, and uh, Spencer Fern is my business partner, and and again with Spencer, um, he's very like-minded as, as myself. Um, we, you know. We want to achieve things, and we want to push Cowell Boxing to the to the fore. We want to be part of all the big nights that you see on Sky, that you see on Channel Five, that boxing fans talk about. And you know, I go along to to Eddie's shows, um, be it at Nottingham Arena, be it at the Echo Arena, be it at, at Sheffield Arena, and 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 I look around and I think, you know what? I'd love to do more of this stuff because we have, you know, we did the Bellew fight, you know, and but I'd love to do more of that sort of stuff. Um, I don't see see what we're doing as 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 rivals to any other promoter because these guys are, are, are brilliant at what they do. Boxing is big enough for many promoters to be doing well as long as they work together. It's big enough for us all to have good champions and great marquee fighters because the more of us that have got um, champions and, and and got fighters that fans are interested in, the bigger the fights will be. If you know, I, I ain't got a problem with the fact that Eddie's got the Sky dates, McKenzie's has got the Channel 5 dates and, and Frank Warren's got all the, the Box Nation dates and everything, I, you know, that's that's great. I would like a piece of the pie, but at the moment we're not going to get a piece of the pie. So we thought, right, let's see what we can do. Um, and we set up uh, Cold World Television. Obviously it's, it's it's a little bit different because it's it's mobile, it's mobile technology. And the way that, that um, sport viewership's going, is through mobiles uh, that that as a percentage. I thought I think I saw something on Sky News the other day actually, just just completely that we launched. 
where it was saying about mobile technology and more and more people are now I think it's, it's raised something like 24% in the last couple of years now that, that people actually watch events on, on the phone um, Sky Go was a big uh, a big groundbreaker and, and what we want to do with our boxing app is similar along the lines of that where people can just watch it wherever they're at if you're at a wedding and, and your missus has dragged you along and you're going to miss the boxing you can watch it on your app you can have a sneaky look at the table do you know what I mean it's as it's, it's, it's simple as that um, so you don't have to miss the boxing if, you, if you're somewhere else um, it, obviously the first night we had a, a few teething problems which to be honest I know it, it is bad but it was only 15% of our viewers that, that we lost which in the big scheme of things on a first run that's not bad you know for, for a first goal we lost 15% and um, as it turned out it's something we want at satellites and we've bought another satellite um, so so um, hopefully that should all be solved um, but it's £1.49 I'm not charging you know a tenner £14.95 um, for fights it's £1.49 you get your app free watch a live fight live light show and it's every single fight on the bill you know every single fight you're getting to see so it's I, I think I don't drink I have, I have a cook whenever I go out I think I think I pay more than one pound forty nine for my cook, you know. Sure. So so it's it's not it's not end of world. Um, so the reason reason why we've put it as a cheap um, option is because we want to get the mass numbers. You know, we get the mass numbers, more people get to see the fights, and it's not just about co boxing fighters. You know, it, it, we're looking at working with other promoters that haven't got TV deals. I know there's two promoters that have approached me already, um, but it's got to. It's got to be something where you know the fights are decent and, and fans are going to want to tune in. Um, so if promoters putting on good fights, then then I'm, I'm willing to I'm willing to show the show the events. I think you should be commended for your TV app, uh, your, your app rather, rather than waiting on stuff to come to you. You've been uh, inventive and got on the case and actually carved out something for, you, for yourself and for your fighters. Yeah, and cheers. Yeah, it's a very, very well, it, it, it came about because they're all all, all the boxing fans. I mean. My Twitter this year has just blown up. You know, me and Spencer we talk quite a lot. It's just it's just nuts how, how all of a sudden you know everybody's following me. Everybody's making you know great comments and everything like that. And it, and it and it means a lot. But at the same time, is it means that you've got to deliver. When people are you know it's great when you're coming through and, and nobody really knows what you're doing. But once people start being aware, you have to deliver. Otherwise, I've seen it. I've seen it with everybody. One minute you know everybody thinks that you're great, and then the next minute everyone starts sort of slagging off and saying, oh, you're not doing this, you're not doing that. Now, we'll never ever be able to please everybody, but we'll try and do things the right way all the time. We'll try and make things available for people. And it's like this up, you know, we still have to pay for production for the, for the shows, you know. I, I've got a, a great commentary team in, in, yeah. in Jamie, uh, Jamie Moore, Ryan Rose, Curtis, Sophia Di Stefano, you know, Paul Berlin, who's worked with his backgrounds in, in TV presenting for, for Calendar News. Um, so we've got a good good team. So, but that costs money, and then so does all the production and everything through Rock. You know, we've, we've teamed up with Rock Global to set up this company, and 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 they, you know, they've got all the technology and everything. But everything costs money, so we still have production costs to, to charge. So this one pound forty nine that we charge for people to, to watch the shows, we need people to, to to download it, and we need people to, to watch it. Because otherwise, then we're not going to carry on. We're not going to be able to sustain it. Do you know what I mean? And it's the same thing as well. You know, um, you can't cover every fight because if 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 there's shows that just aren't that good, then our production costs we're not going to waste as money on production costs for a show that's crap. To be honest, so you know it, we can't please everybody, and we'll not be able to please everybody. But but I'll do my best to to keep trying to make good fights and and keep trying to do what whatever we can do in order to get up there, and then. You know, hopefully one day we're up there and we've got, you know, we've got our shows out to the masses and we're doing big events and, and hopefully we can still make, make good shows. I can't see why not. If, if other promoters will carry on working with us, then I can't see why not. I mean, the crawler, crawler and Farrell fight was made easy. You know, it was a simple call to, obviously, Farrell's my kid. It was a simple call to, to Richard Coxon and, and, and Hatton Promotions. And, and it got made easy. There was no, there was no trying to leg each other up or anything like that. That's how boxing needs to be. And I think as, as long as you can do that, then whether it's fights that are made between Cole or boxing and somebody else, or fights that are made between Matchroom and, and somebody else, you know, fights can be made. You know, and, and fans can can be pleased. But there's a lot of stuff that goes on where promoters might get get the get the slag in but they don't understand what's going on behind the scenes. And and sometimes I think promoters get a, get an unfair an unfair amount of stake because of that. What can we anticipate seeing from Cool Girl Boxing in 2013? Um, well, every year 
I always, you know, it's always New Year's Eve. Every year, I'll, I'll be talking to a missus, and I always say, Do you know what? What a fantastic year. Got to, got to outdo that year. How am I going to do that? Got to outdo it. But every year, I've always managed to have a better year. You know, going back to, to when, when um, both Ryan Rhodes and Kell Brook had him winning the British title in the same year, I was like, next year, I was like, how am I going to beat that? You know? But we did, and, and, and each year it's gone on, and the same with the promotions. I never thought that this year would have achieved what we have done, but we have. And now we're hungrier for more success, and I'm hungry to, to have you know more recognition for us fighters and, and build us fighters up. So in 2013, we want big fights. I'm, I'm trying to put a fight together at the moment for, for us March 8th show. Um, that'll get the fans excited, you know, and, and I'm very close to that. Whether it happens or not, I don't know until it, until it's signed. But um, I want to make the big fights, I want to make the fights that are, that are good, uh, that are exciting, but I want to build our, our team of, of, of boxers through, you know, we've got some great prospects, like I said. I want to get Derry Matthews a, 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 a title, you know, hopefully Matthew Atten wins the IBO title out in, out in South Africa and, then, you know, we can do something with him. You know, there's, there's, there's ample opportunities there for us um, to, to have an even bigger year than, than what we had um, last year. And, and like I said, you know, relationships that I've got with most of the promoters, you know, it's great. It means that obviously there's going to be a few times where we're going in against each other. I mean, that's, that's boxing, you know, but at the end of the day, we're mates, we get on and, and we can make fights. We can make fights that are important to the fans as well. You've been known as a trainer, uh, predominantly as well as a promoter. You're hanging up the pads this year, you're strictly going to concentrate on your promoting. How, how's that feeling? Is that something you've, you've had in mind to do for a while, Dave? Um, as the promoting and managing just took off, like seriously, nuts. Um, as well as as well as this as well, you know, we run the Co-op Boxing Education and I kind of oversee that as well. So. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a lot with, with that and the kids that we've got. We've got about 40 kids that we look after. Um, so as that's growing, I'm having to have an eye on that. We're setting up different sort of things and, and you can't do everything. For me to be a trainer, it means you know a couple hours in the morning, a couple hours in the afternoon, studying videos for the fighters, what we're doing. And I just can't do it because I have to do all that side of things on, on, on managing and, and promoting anyway. Um, we do a lot of stuff. Um, so I just I just haven't got the time, and and, I, and to be honest with you, um, I'm, a lot of times where where you put a lot of efforts into fighters, and then they, for whatever reason they just can't be asked to technically keep up with what the, what what you need them to be doing in order to, to, to improve and progress. So after a while, you kind of think, well, what am I here for? You know, that's that's gone on in the past at times. But I've had, a, I've had a great run as a trainer, you know, um, I've never professed to be the best out there, I've never professed to be any, any good, I just happen to have, have done pretty well at, at what I do, you know, um, it's been a great run, but I just haven't got the time for it anymore, um, and, and, and also it is, like I said, it, it can be a bit disheartening, um, and for the time that I need to be spent looking after me, me fighters as a promoter, as a manager, I just, I just can't do it, and, and as a promoter, I like to see the guy that are, that are, are part of our sta uh, stable train. I like to be able to go and watch him spar. I like to be able to go and see him because generically all trainers train at roughly the same sort of times. You know, you have a morning session, an evening session. And if I'm a trainer, then I never get to see these other fighters that I've got in Manchester, that I've got in Liverpool, you know, wherever. I never get to see them train. Now I can. Now I can pop up and go and see them. Well, David Caldwell, I want to thank you for giving us uh, your end of year summary. I'm sorry we haven't picked out every one of your fighters. Um, Can't due, do that. due to the, the amount of fighters that you actually have, I've just picked out a few to talk about. And um, yeah, we wish you the best of success with what you're doing Thanks, well. in 2013. And hopefully, we get a chance to get some of your shows. And yeah, I appreciate everything that I from London does for us. You know, the exposure that we've, that we've had throughout the year has been fantastic. Guys like yourselves. You know, it, it means a lot, and, and, and for all the boxing fans out there, you know, thanks for supporting us. Um, have a great Christmas. Have a brilliant 2013.